National Day of Prayer today. Um, there's lots of prayer calls going on. Um, hope you can join some of those. We're going to pray today, too. But I was on one last night with the Lamplighters Ministry, which I'm going to put that uh, website on my website today so you can go and, and, and get on their mailing list to see when their um, prayer calls are, because anybody can join. And it's you just get good insight about how to pray. Their, their burden is for America and for the return to, to the Lord of America. So, um, but he was bringing out last night this passage from Isaiah 28, and um, that hail will sweep away the refuge of lies. But let me go first of all, verse 17 of Isaiah 28. He said, he read this, also I will make justice the measuring line. He is John Hamill, John and Jolene Hamill, the people who had this ministry. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plummet. You know, we're all crying out for justice. We're crying out for justice in our nation, that the, the lies might be brought to the light, that our nation, that everyone in our nation would see justice done to these, to these individuals who are persisting on uh, partnering with evil. Now, we don't pray against them. We pray against the evil powers. And we just have to keep our minds on the, the fact that this is demonic that we're dealing with. It's the people are just captured. So um, I started looking at that this morning. And I, I thought, okay, let's get some background here. And I got out my commentaries, my commentary. And um, I'm reading about it. And, oh, my goodness, I, the Lord just showed me some really cool stuff. Um, and I'm going to refer you to some other things. But... Anyway, so he's saying in this commentary, okay, first of all, you've got, let's read what he, what he read last night. We're going to go from 14. Um, yeah, therefore hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men who rule this people who are in Jerusalem, because you've said, we have made a covenant with death. And with Sheol, we are in agreement. Now, the covenant with death makes me think of the, the murder that's going on in our nation every day of innocent lives in the womb. Okay, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and our, our, with Sheol, we are in agreement. In other words, we don't, we don't have to fear the pit or, the, or death. We're, we, we got that covered. When the overflowing scourge passes through, the Lord says, it will not, no, I'm sorry. And they're saying that those who are partnering with death when the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge. Yeah, we see the lies around us. And under falsehood, we have hidden ourselves. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation. Here we go with this messianic prophecy. A tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Also, I will make justice the measuring line. Here's our cry. We've been crying out for justice. God says, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plummet. The hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. As often as it goes out, it will take you. From morning by morning, it will pass over. And by day and by night, it will be a terror just to understand the report. For the bed is too short to stretch out on. You're not, you're not going to have any rest. This is God speaking to his enemies. And the covering and the covering so narrow that one cannot wrap himself in. You won't have a place to rest. There won't be any blankets for you to wrap up in. For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perazim. And that's when the Lord defeated the Philistines before David, 2 Samuel 5, 5, or 5, 20, I think it is. Anyway, it's 5. He will be angry as in the Valley of Gibeon, which is 2 Samuel 5, 25. Again, a victory of David over the Philistines. That he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. There's another translation that says his very strange act. This is what we're needing in our day. So it says, therefore, don't be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong. So he's giving warning to the enemies of his people, of his remnant people. Don't be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong, lest you remain in bondage, lest you be tied up from my judgment, God is saying. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a destruction. This is the prophet saying, I've heard it. A destruction determined even upon the whole earth. Now, I went back and looked at, okay, what's the background of this prophecy? 
It's Assyria is the enemy that's about to confront the northern uh, territory here, and they don't, they're clueless. It says, uh, the first of the chapter is about, you know, he's talking to the, to the drunkards of Ephraim, that's the northern tribes. It says, you know, uh, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. Um, woe to all you who are overcome by wine. He's describing a, an, a lifestyle of licentiousness here. It says, um, they've erred through wine at verse 7 in Isaiah 28, and through intoxicating drink they're out of the way. They've all, you know, the priest and the prophet, everybody, they're swallowed up by wine, they're caught up, they're out of the way through intoxicating drink, they err in vision, all their tables are full of vomit and filth, no place is clean. So, you know, this is, as we see this darkness being exposed in our nation, yesterday I was so sad as I, I heard something else about how Americans are betraying their own people and their own nation, you know, through this deep state stuff. I mean, it's it's horrible. And I, I just sometimes I think I can't look at this, and I don't every day anymore because it's it's saddening to me. But, you know, to stay abreast but not to feed on that stuff, as, I said, as I've said before. But so God goes on. In verse 9, the prophet says that these men, this is a mocking of the prophet's, whom will he teach knowledge, and whom will he make to understand the message? These are those who are living in, in uncleanness and filth. And they're mocking the remnant here, the prophet. He's, they say, whom will he teach knowledge? Whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from milk? Those just drawn from the breasts? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And this is what God says. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he, capital he, God, will speak to this people. To whom he said, God said, this is rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little that they might go and fall backward, be snared and caught. And then we go into where I started, where the lamplighter's ministry started last night. John Hamill said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men who said we've made a covenant with death. Now my point, what the Lord told me this morning is I'm reading this. I'm going, what's the background here? And then this because of this commentary I'm reading, he says, you know, this is mocking. This is the people mocking the prophet, saying, who will you teach knowledge to? And then the Lord said, with stammering lips, another tongue. He, God, will speak to this people. That they might go and fall backward, verse 13, and be broken, be snared, and caught. The Lord said, that's, that's the spirit language. That's praying in tongues, Carolyn. Keep it up. And then I immediately thought of, of Isaiah 30. There's another passage here about God destroying his enemies through a, an unconventional method. He's talking about Assyria being on the door, um, attacking his people. It's going to come because the judgment, because for judgment, God's bringing judgment on his people for their ways. It says in verse 31, of Isaiah 30, for through the voice of the Lord, Assyria will be beaten down. Now here's Isaiah 28, right? We're, we're praying in tongues, we're praying in the Spirit, and the Lord says, um, they will be snared and caught by another tongue, verse 11. Okay, back to verse uh, to Isaiah 30, 31, for through the voice of the Lord, Assyria will be beaten down as he strikes with the rod, and in every place where the staff of punishment passes, which the Lord lays on him, the enemies, it will be with tambourines and harps. And in battles of brandishing, he will fight with it. He will fight with it with tambourines and harps. That's us worshiping. I love that passage. But I, I just, oh, this is so exciting to me, what the Lord said to me this morning. And I, and I want to refer you to... Um, if you don't pray in tongues, if you don't pray in the Spirit, I refer you to my website, carolynparr.com, 
Look under on the categories on the right hand column, um, audio files, um, and you will see, or you can look under spiritual language because I've got, I think I've got the audio files there too. But anyway, look under audio files and it's called um, walking, no, praying in the spirit, <laughs> walking in the spirit. Ah, oh, you'll see an introduction. I did about three, a series of three teachings on praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. And go there if you haven't, if you're not practicing that. It's an amazing weapon. It's encrypted prayer. The enemy can't understand what we're saying. Now he understands what I'm saying today. And But anyway, he can't understand that language. So Lord, we just, we say, we agree with this passage, Isaiah 28. Lord, this is what you said, how you deal with the enemies with those who make a covenant with death and those who um, think they, they can avoid all judgment, Lord. Um, and we're, we're saying to you today, Lord, we want to see this passage. We want to, Lord, you're, you put in your word these truths that, and, and these uh, clues about how you deal with the enemy and how you did deal with the enemies of Israel because Assyria was beaten down. And so, Lord, we say the enemies in our nation, the demonic forces that are trying to take down our nation, that think they are not ever going to be judged, Lord, we bring the words of the Holy Spirit against them today, Lord, by our prayer languages, and by our the Word of God that says you will you will uh, sweep away the refuge of lies, Lord, in verse seventeen. You will make justice the measuring line. You will right, make righteousness the plummet. You're going to bring the, the plummet line of righteousness again in our nation by your grace because we, Lord, are giving our voices to you. We're giving our prayers to you, Lord. Hail sweeps away the refuge of lies and waters will overflow the hiding place. There will be no place to hide for these demonic forces, Lord, who are trying to take down our nation because we, your people, by your grace, are praying. And Lord, we, we ask, I ask that you anoint all of those who are leading prayer meetings today, Lord, that we might bring forth the words, the word of the Lord, this word, which the angels heed, Lord, according to verse to uh, Psalm 103, verse 20. The angels heed the voice of your word, Lord. So we bring you your word. And we say, Lord, um, lies, um, that, that you will sweep away the lies by the scourge that you're bringing. You know, in verse, um, one other thing, this, this uh, commentator says, verse 19, as often as it goes out, it will take you. So I'm at this scourge that, that God is bringing against his enemies. Morning by morning, it will pass over. By day and by night, it will be a terror just to understand the report. Um, this commentator here, this is Keel, and um, I forget the other guy's name. It says, uh, the covenant will be struck out like the words will be marked through that covenant with death these demonic powers have made. It will be a scourging without end as Jehovah preaches to them. You know, as we let loose the words of the Holy Spirit, God preaches because it says, with stammering lips, uh, I will, he will speak to this people. With another tongue, he will speak to this people. He will speak to the demonic forces. We don't have to. Okay. Oh, so anyway, over and over, the morning, the morning by morning, day by day. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the, the ability to take down the demonic powers in our nation by prayer. I bless you. Get in on some a prayer meeting at least today. Um, and I'm going to put that Lamplighter um, website link on my web, on my website, carolynpar.com, so you can see it and join in their meeting today. Um, there's one at 10 o'clock, one at 11 o'clock. Oh, there's a bunch of